My name is Sonia Skakish-Skrima, and I'm from Aurora. And I got involved in this when um, I first read about a year ago that uh, the State Land Board, which owns a tremendous amount of land in Colorado, um, was considering an offer for drilling the 97 acres that they used to call the jewel of their land um, portfolio um, for fracking. And it struck me as a really strange idea because it would be over four aquifers. Uh, there's a super fun site there, Lowry. Uh, there's unexploded munitions, and it sounded like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so that's what got me involved. And we set up a group called What the Frack Arapaho. Uh, started giving talks all around town um, to try and get people oriented to what was coming in to Aurora. Um, that the status of that, by the way, is that Conoco Phillips is going to be developing that. They have agreed to closed loop systems, but they'll still be flaring. They'll still be. There's no. Um, most of the factors that are important to us, like the water and so on, are not addressed. Conoco Phillips has also uh, bought up 44,000 acres south of I-70 in Arapahoe County. So. We'll, it's kind of like uh, they own the county now. <laughs> the, um, and what's happening in our town, in our county, and going on all over Colorado, is that oil and gas comes in and says, we're bringing in lots of money, lots of revenues uh, from all the different fees and so on, and for people who own mineral rights. Um, and in the example of the state land board, that's money that actually goes, it's held in trust for our kids for education in Colorado. So it's so valuable. But, um, so our state land board, as a steward for Colorado public education, um, our cities, our counties are being told, lots of money coming in, lots of jobs. And in, my county, in Arapaho, for example, uh, there was a meeting held for elected officials, I think it was on the 20th of January, where there were a number of people who appeared who were a little skeptical about this and, and had some questions and so on, but when they saw the numbers about jobs and money, that was it, it sealed the deal. And um, what I'm here to talk about today is the fact that the the amount of money they're promising and the amount of jobs they're promising is a gross. First of all, it's way overestimated. Secondly, it's a gross. It's not a net. It doesn't take into account costs. So I'm here today to talk about costs. Um, most of us as individuals or small business owners, unless we're fabulously wealthy, when we sit down to look at our budget we have to, and plan, we have to look at both sides of the ledger. We look at possible income and certain income, and we look at costs. We, we know we have certain costs, they arise. Uh, there are certain unforeseen costs we have to plan for and so on. But what we're finding in Colorado, and actually all over the nation, is that our state government, our local governments, are not doing that job. They're not doing that due diligence. <laughs> in fact, they're taking like a, a back of the envelope offer for a tremendous offer. Jump in now, buy, you know, <laughs> swamp land in Florida or whatever the case might be, and saying, yes, let's do it. Look at all the money that's going to come in. And they're not looking at the costs. Um, I'd like to start with um, going over some information from, it's come from New York, they're a group of economists who said, whoa, <laughs> let's start looking at costs. And just to step back for just a second, um, it's important to note in this, and that's the reason Josh Fox is doing that second movie, that the reason that you're here today and we're giving this panel, and that we don't all know this already, is because of something called regulatory capture. And that is that our um, agency that's supposed to be the authority in regulating for our state 
is actually promoting the gas industry and not putting the brakes on this and calling for all these due diligence with regard to water costs, etc. And when they present the same message as industry to our local elected officials and to our legislators, our legislators believe them. And so we're, that's why we're here today <laughs> to uh, present this and hopefully you'll spread this information around. Uh, there's a new bill that's just before, um, it's going to be heard on the 16th in Colorado, and that's Senate Bill 12088, presented by Ted Harvey, which would um, move back legal precedent, take away rights from uh, local governments in Colorado to have any mitigating say in terms of reducing harm from oil and gas development, and put all the responsibility on the state. And that would be through the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, which unfortunately isn't um, doing its job in terms of being a prudent representative for the public. And that's the case in many states around our nation. So a lot of what's occurred already with regard to fracking and all over the nation and here as well, is because of the tremendous amounts of money spent by industry, 370 million spent between 2005, when they uh, got Congress to um, give them a waiver, the only industry in the United States to get a waiver from federal health and safety regs like Safe Water Drinking Act, Clean Air Act, and so on. Um, so they've put in a lot of time and money to make sure that they don't have to follow the rules, um, that they, and not only do they not have to follow the rules, but those same rules, those regulations, um, require monitoring, they require study, they require verification. And without those regulations applying, those studies aren't occurring. So what we'll talk about is what the data is that's emerging in terms of costs and health also. So these group of economists in um, New York wrote to Governor Cuomo, uh, a great number of them from Cornell and, and private economic and financial industries, and what it was a, a review of, um, well, let me read sections to you. The state's economic focus should be the realistic identification and estimation of the present value of all costs and benefits to the state and its citizens. And what they determined in their review was that um, the benefits were vastly overestimated. You may have heard, for example, New York, New York is in the Marcellus Shale region. You may have heard that industry had uh, put forth a uh, an estimate of how much of this abundant gas would be available. And the U.S. Geological Survey came in and did a survey and said, no, actually, you've overestimated by what was it, 80%. <laughs> so that initial, you know, assumption that they had that much more would have led to it was that much more and it was going to be that much more abundant and cheap and so on. Well, okay, that assumption went away. Um, they found that the um, oil and gas industry had commissioned a number of studies that uh, gave them numbers to present to New York state officials about all the money that, that was going to come in and about all the jobs that was going to come in. And what these economists said was that their assumptions were faulty, their methods were extremely faulty, and so they arrived at absurd conclusions. So they point out, for example, that um, the report doesn't seriously address the environmental costs, and that's um, an understatement. <laughs> um, the report's conclusions, they say, uh, show the creation of 54,000 uh, jobs in New York and so on, but when, they, when you analyze it properly and you look at the costs, for example, the costs to other jobs of tourism, real estate, property values, organic farmers, etc., you come up with a much, much, much lower number. Um, other questionable assumptions 
wells will produce for 30 years and they aren't actually finding that. This was with the uh, natural sh the shale gas. Um, Adjustment costs are totally ignored. The oil and gas industry is an extractive industry. These are known for the boom-bust cycle. In 2007, there were a number of uh, videos that are produced that are online on YouTube about Weld County and Garfield County with interviews with concerned uh, local officials from planning commissions, from the mayor, from um, wildlife specialists and so on that were very thoughtful and they're worth look, checking out for um, on YouTube. And they talked about local costs. And um, these days there, there is an amazing um, report that came out of North Dakota, uh, a small town, Ellings, Wellington? Williston. Williston. Williston, thank you. Williston. Uh, with outrageous facts. Uh, in ter it was a meeting of the sheriff's, de sheriff's department, and I think Rick uh, took the time to call and make to verify, is this true? <laughs> because what they were finding and what they were presenting, the information that was shared, was that it, it sounded like a town run amok. They have big uh, gas drill rigs there. Uh, the traffic has become so difficult and so um, constant that they have uh, as much as many accidents at 10 a.m. as 2 a.m. Uh, they're afraid to let their kids out on the street. Um, there are when when people go to jail for the fist fights and so on with the drillers in town, they pay in cash. <laughs> their bond money. It, it's just wreaked havoc on their community in terms of having a community. The, the police no longer respond to accidents because they don't have the staff or time. So those are the kind of impacts it can have on a community. And in the um, health assessment that was done for Colorado for the Battlement Mesa uh, town that requested it, uh, they covered some of those impacts in there, impacts to traffic and roads and so on. In, in my county, in Arapahoe, um, one of the commissioners expressed when it was first discussed about fracking coming into Arapaho, expressed that he was most concerned about traffic and dust. Well, traffic is, is certainly an issue, road costs and so on. Um, what the other gentlemen have pointed out here is that some of the costs are way beyond things that we could possibly even begin to uh, consider paying for. Um, Let's see. So in this report, again, they go over cost of water contamination, uh, costs of increased demand on hospitals, police, fire departments, emergency services. And that also was covered in our Colorado Health Assessment, which was a study which was squelched. Um, and I would like to point out here with regard to health impacts, um, there's a group in, in Utah called Utah F uh, Physicians for a Healthy Environment, which has which is just announced in December that they are suing Rio Tinto, the, one of the largest uh, mineral extractive companies in the world, for the tremendous pollution to their area. And um, what they did was they they actually worked out health costs, the costs to the community in terms of time lost at work, uh, non-productivity, -product disability, um, extra costs for hospitals, health care, etc. And I'm hoping that we will start to see similar efforts here in Colorado and across the nation with this, um, with regard to fracking. Public, the whole idea of public health and epidemiology is to recognize on behalf of the public um, disease vectors as they emerge. Well, we see emerging disease vectors with the same constellation of symptoms all across the country near drilling wells. And we see a, a pattern of certain neurological problems, some of them which become permanent. 
of um, endocrine disruption, of severe respiratory disorders, and uh, dermatological problems, etc. And without the federal regulations applying, since they're exempted, um, our public health agency nationally, CDC, and our local ones like Colorado Department of Public Health have not been called on to do this. We need to call on them to do this because we are seeing the same thing in Colorado, the same constellation of symptoms and uh, hurt parties. And um, with regard to the kind of impacts and, and risks posed, we know that children are the most vulnerable population. Um, let me move to Pennsylvania. Uh, in Pennsylvania, there are more than 4,500 wells that were drilled since 2007. Um, there were great offers of jobs and money that were presented to the state of, of Pennsylvania. And um, they were told that um, overall would result in, let's say in a second, um, the industry affiliated study claimed that uh, this new incoming gas drilling would support 216,000 jobs in Pennsylvania by 2015. The uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics so far on this shows that uh, 4,144 jobs were created and in fact um, a number of those um, are for, they, they called it a great job program for Oklahoma and Texas because many of those jobs were not for people who resided in Pennsylvania, they were for outsiders. In Dimmock, Pennsylvania, when there was a huge spill and they had to evacuate people, uh, it took two days for anyone to come in and start taking care of it because they were coming from Texas. Um, also in, in the industry, there are um, some very high paying jobs. Um, most of them are as independent contractors on the ground jobs. In the oil industry, um, more than any other industry in the United States, they have had a, the largest rise in the number of independent contractors. So not full-time employment, not benefited uh, employment. So you have to ask again, what kind of jobs? And are they temporary or permanent? Are they for people out of state or people in our state? Um, in this report regarding Pennsylvania, they also mentioned that although lots of people who own land and have mineral rights in Pennsylvania earned lots of money from these wells on their land, on the other hand, they lost control of use of their land, full use. And if you watch a movie like Gasland or Split Estate, you can really get a picture of that, of how um, their lives are impacted by this 24-7 hours of operation on their land. They also lose quality of life. They lose uh, air quality. Um, they have threats to their health. And um, it's, it's found all over the nation, and industry acknowledges that with regard to property values, whether you own the mineral rights and you're getting money from it, or they're just doing it 350 feet from your home because someone else owns it, when they first start drilling, the values will drop about 22%. If things go wrong, they're likely to drop 50%. If there are towns where things go very wrong, or right in your area with the kind of spills that Shane was talking about with a gross contamination, you can't sell it at any price. So these are uncompensated losses in our, our values, our property, and so on. Um, there's one other trove of information regarding what's actually being uh, the situation with regard to jobs and um, actual costs. And that's from the Barnett Shale area in Texas. And in a review by, I think it's Deborah Rogers, 
that uh, she did in Binghamton in January. Um, it's on YouTube. She mentioned that in terms of taxes and revenues, only 18% of municipalities in the Barnett Shale actually said tax revenue news had increased from oil and gas. 26% indicated their costs had increased. She points out that in uh, Fort Worth, which was heavily fracked, much like the uh, pictures that Shane was showing in his area, um, <coughs> that benzene and other toxics were detected at 94% of the sites tested. <coughs> Um, that the fracking of the shale gas there contributes more toxics than all the cars, trains, and airplanes in that area. And that childhood asthma has more than doubled from the national average. With regard to jobs, um, industry in 2010 said that um, they were expecting 44,000 jobs to emerge. Actually, what emerged was um, 7,108. Um, in Ohio, the projected uh, jobs number was 200,000 jobs, and what worked out to be the case was one-tenth of that, about 20,000 jobs. So there are vast overestimations, or over-misunderestimations. <laughs> overestimations uh, with regard to the amount of monies that are supposed to be coming in. In North Texas in 2008, um, they were told that 111,131 jobs will be coming in because of the Barnett Shale. And yet, when this lady who prepared this overview, uh, Deborah Rogers, looked into it in the Bureau of Statistics, she found that comparing 111,000 um, promised that there were only 165, 66,500 total jobs in this industry all together on and offshore in the United States, all over the United States. So again, there's some mighty, um, mighty big, some studies have indicated that, that um, overestimates are up to 800 percent. It's just, and unless someone calls them on it, unless someone does the research. And what I'm here to, to ask you to consider asking uh, our state uh, legislators to make sure happens is that somebody starts doing this for Colorado uh, to total up what's promised and what's been delivered and, um, and so on. Uh, let's see. One other... Um, Important thing to note is that in the Marcellus Shale, that's the New York area, um, it was brought up this summer in the New York Times and some other uh, sources that a lot of the mortgages that people had for their land and their property, um, they got through their local banks or credit unions. Well, their local banks sold those mortgages up to the big banks in order to get more liquidity. And what was found out was that um, the big banks, when it came to their attention, oh, we've bought up all these properties with, which have drilling on them, that most of those people, the like 90%, hadn't bothered and no one had bothered to alert them to check their mortgage terms, which strictly did not allow for that kind of activity on their property. So, what was discussed in the New York Times was that if these big banks wish to, they can require all these local community banks to buy back all of those mortgages, which would be a tremendous, they are talking about it as another huge, big, bursting bubble that can impact us across the nation. Um, with regard to insurance, the same thing. Uh, questions as to whether title insurance will cover and mortgage insurance will cover um, properties that are fracked because it poses unique risks. And insurance people know that. They look at the actuarials and they study the risks. 
So there is at least one industry that's, that's looking at facts as opposed to pie in the sky. Um, there was a case um, in, I believe it was Wyoming, of a fellow who um, had a large piece of land and the oil and gas company wanted to come and do seismic testing. And um, he, he asked his title insurance, would that be okay? They said, certainly not. If you do that, we will cancel your title insurance. So he called his county and said, what should I do? Well, that county, like many counties here and, and, our, and many states, like our state, was pushing hard for gas and oil and said, if you don't allow this to occur on your property, we will condemn your property. Um, so that kind of push is going on in Colorado right now. Um, the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, along with industry, comes to local um, discussions of elected officials and the public regarding what shall we do, what can we do to slow this down or protect ourselves somewhat. And um, in Arapahoe, in, in Aurora, in Elbert County, all over, what happens is Colorado Oil and Gas shows up and says, you had better not create these rules or we, we will see you in court, we will litigate against you. Industry, same thing, don't make these special rules or we will see you in court. Um, so we have the unfortunate situation where we have not only industry pushing hard with you know, a very wealthy, strong campaign, but we have them pushing hard on our elected officials. And we have our regulatory agency doing the same thing. Um, there's a bill that's coming up before Colorado legislature, and I'd like to leave out some handouts about it. It's going to be heard on the 16th. It is really important for all of us to call, email, uh, go to the legislature, talk to our legislators and make it clear that we don't want this to pass because it would forever preclude having Colorado cities and towns be able to have a say in their development and say, no, you can't do that here unless you use closed loop or contain this or stop these emissions. Um, I'd like to finish just by reading one last thing. And this is from the Salt Lake Tribune um, from December. China has become the poster child for what industrialization without environmental restraint looks like. Um, the Chinese Ministry of Health issued a statement, pollution has made I'm sorry, this is a very small print, I should have reprinted it. Has made, um, has become the lead, leading cause of death in China, followed by respiratory and heart disease. Unreported to Western media are hundreds and hundreds of riots and explosions of the public unrest each day, protesting pollution. In one town, um, and I can't pronounce it, it starts with S-H, took matters into their own hands. The town's residents became alarmed as they witnessed domestic, uh, dramatic increase in birth defects, chronic deadly disease, cancer, toxic levels of heavy, heavy metals. Their air, water, and soil were so polluted they could no longer grow their own food, and their water supply uh, had to be trucked in from outside, as we see with some of these communities where we've had um, contaminations. They blamed the town's largest employer, uh, a factory, and what they did was they stormed the factory and they closed it. This is in China, where, you know, <laughs> we all remember Tiananmen Square, they're up against very strong prohibitions for public actions, and yet they did this. And it remains closed today. So I'd like to leave you with that. Um, that was actually the inspiration for the Utah Physicians to group to go ahead with their class action suit against Rio Tinto. And my, my, the message I want to leave you with is that 
uh, the message for be the change. We have to be the change. And we need to make these changes now. So we hope you'll join us in uh, some, of, some of our efforts here. And we have uh, two other individuals from other towns who wanted to uh, mention what they're doing, and then we'll move to discussion. My name is Sonia Skakich Skrima, and I'm from Aurora. And I got involved in this when um, I first read about a year ago that uh, the State Land Board, which owns a tremendous amount of land in Colorado, um, was considering an offer for drilling the 97 acres that they used to call the jewel of their land uh, portfolio um, for fracking. And it struck me as a really strange idea because it would be over four aquifers. Uh, there's a super fun site there, Lowry. Uh, there's unexploded munitions and it sounded in trust for our kids for education in Colorado. So it's so valuable. But, um, so our state land board, as a steward for Colorado public education, um, our cities, our counties are being told lots of money coming in, lots of jobs. And in my county, in Arapaho, for example, uh, there was a meeting held for elected officials, I think it was on the 20th of January, where there were a number of people who appeared who were a little skeptical about this and, and had some questions and so on, but also uh, bought up 44,000 acres south of I-70 in Arapahoe County. So it's kind of like uh, they own the county now. <laughs> the, um, and what's happening in our town, in our county, and going on all over Colorado is that oil and gas comes in and says, we're bringing in lots of money, lots of revenues uh, from all the different fees and so on, and for people who own mineral rights. Um, and in the example of the state land board, that's money that actually goes, it's held like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so that's what got me involved. And we set up a group called What the Frack Arapaho. Uh, started giving talks all around town. Um, to try and get people oriented to what was coming in to Aurora. Um, that, the status of that, by the way, is that ConocoPhillips is going to be developing that. They have agreed to closed loop systems, but they'll still be flaring, they'll still be, there's no, um, most of the factors that are important to us, like the water and so on, are not addressed. ConocoPhillips is when they saw the numbers about jobs and money, that was it, it sealed the deal. And um, what I'm here to talk about today is the fact that the, the amount of money they're promising <coughs> and the amount of jobs they're promis promising is a gross, first of all, it's way overestimated, secondly, it's a gross, it's not a net, it doesn't take into account costs. So I'm here today to talk about costs. Um, most of us as individuals or small business owners, unless we're fabulously wealthy when we sit down